And that divine key. You're so romantic, Tish. We both heard a lot about the chemistry between us, and uh, it was there, undoubtedly. It began, I believe, because each of us knew that we had to be attracted to the other, and we were professionals, and we found ways to, to bring that about. But as we continued to do the show, I think we both began to realize that we really were attracted to one another. And uh, I think that gave us a very nice edge in the scene. Carolyn and designer Nolan Miller wanted to create an unforgettable look that would be both comic and sexy, but it would not be easy. We struggled and struggled with her gown to try and make it look like it was supposed to look. I've never had a more difficult uh, problem to work out. We made the dress very tight, but up the back we had Velcro so that the tails that went out on the floor could be removed and we could open up the back of the dress so she could walk around when she wasn't in front of the camera. You just are very striking in that outfit, but I understand that um, it takes you a couple of hours to get out of it. Yes, it does, because I have to get the wig undone and the makeup off, and uh, it takes about 20 minutes to get out of the dress. Despite her discomfort, Carolyn had a great time playing the spooky seductress. Well, it's so much fun because it has no basis in fact. Everything is, uh, we make up our own rules as we go along. Carolyn kept the rest of the cast in stitches between takes, even six-year-old Lisa Loring. The character of Wednesday was supposed to be very morose, so I was never allowed to smile, ever, which was very strange for a young child. So in between takes, Carolyn would always do something to, you know, make me laugh. It was hardly the way she'd planned it, but the Adams family brought Carolyn the kind of success she had always craved. The series quickly became a pop culture phenomenon. Carolyn's likeness was reproduced on a staggering variety of toys, games, and collectibles. And her picture appeared on countless magazine covers. At the age of 35, she was one of the biggest stars on television, loved by fans of all ages. But it wouldn't last. ABC executives decided that they wanted to give the network a more serious image. So in 1966, they canceled The Addams Family after only two seasons. Carolyn was grieved when it was canceled. She enjoyed it that much. I think she was surprised that it was canceled because it was actually canceled when the ratings were still pretty high. We were stunned. Uh, there was a subtlety about, about the Adams Family. And there were a couple of people in administration there who never caught on to the show, never really got it. And I think they probably put something on that they liked more. Throughout the next year, Carolyn remained a hot property. She appeared on TV's newest hit sensation, Batman, joining a host of other famous stars who played special guest villains on the show. Don't try to fight it, darling. Relax and worship me. The actress relished the role of the evil temptress, Marsha, Queen of Diamonds. Batman was certainly uh, offbeat, and because it was playful and silly and theater of the absurd. Uh, it really helped to have people who, you know, had wit and had a very playful side. Now, let's see. You made a vow that no stranger would enter the Batcave. What if I weren't a stranger? What do you mean? What if I were Mrs. Batman? You must be joking. I never joke, darling. Besides, one vow deserves another. Now think of Robin, not to mention Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara. Unless we become a happy couple, those three will spend the rest of their lives following me around on their knees. <laughs> but few other job offers followed. Carolyn was afraid that she had become too closely identified with Morticia. You know, it's difficult uh, if you have a big hit, as she did with the Adams Family and playing Morticia, it becomes uh, somewhat tough after 
because she was expected to be Morticia much of the time. And uh, it just doesn't happen that way. And, and you try to go on and you try to play other roles. So it's, it's not easy. Carolyn wanted to remind people that she was a serious actress. So in 1967, she returned to the theater, starring in a national tour of Harold Pinter's Broadway hit, The Homecoming. But she did not enjoy performing in the dark and confusing play. On the road for long stretches at a time and unhappy with her work, Carolyn felt alone and unsure of herself. She needed a friend, so she turned to her vocal coach, Broadway conductor Herbert Green. Their relationship soon blossomed into romance. Herb was such a talented uh, musician, and uh, I think that probably was part of the attraction there, you know, the mutual respect for talent. They were married in December 1968 in the home of Carolyn's close friend, Muriel Lipsy. But many of the guests wondered what the bride saw in her new husband. I don't think that Herb Green was very good for Carolyn Jones at all. I don't think her friends felt comfortable with him. I do not know what kind of a Svengali he was that she fell under his spell because he was uh, not terribly nice and very strange that she would go from people who loved her and, and catered to her and took care of her and were there for her to someone like this man. Herb seized on his 39-year-old wife's doubts about the future of her career. He persuaded her to retire from show business and move to Palm Springs, California. Determined to make her marriage work, she became more and more isolated from her friends and colleagues. As long as she was acting and growing in the craft, there was a vitality behind life. And in Palm Springs, she really felt that she was put out to pasture and that uh, cut off from the very thing that was her source of rejuvenation, excitement, growth, uh, nurturing, the things that were really important to her. After seven years of retirement, Carolyn finally admitted to herself just how unhappy she was. In 1976, she left Herb and came back to Los Angeles. I think that Carolyn tried to do everything to make the marriage a success, but the marriage was really doomed from the start. All of a sudden, she was back in LA. I think she couldn't be away from her love <laughs> that long, and so she had to return and start her career again. Carolyn felt her old vitality returning. She was determined to restart her career, even though she knew it would be difficult at age 46. She had moved back to Hollywood, and she hoped she hadn't been forgotten. By the late 1970s, Carolyn Jones was acting again and loving every minute of it. She did guest spots on TV shows like Wonder Woman and appeared in TV movies like The French Atlantic Affair. She even had a featured role in the landmark 1977 miniseries, Roots, seen by millions of viewers around the world. That year, she also got a chance to reunite with some old friends when she starred in Halloween with the new Adams Family. And what was remarkable was that Carolyn Jones, all these years later, still could do Morticia kind of effortlessly and look good. So it really was bringing the Mae West spirit of, mm, I'm going to show them I can still swing my stuff. I think she had a ball. We very much enjoyed being together again. And uh, it was a lot of fun to do. Carolyn didn't confine herself to television. She performed on stage in productions of Murder Among Friends and California Suite. Once again, her work in the theater led to romance when she fell in love with fellow cast member Peter Bailey Britton. <laughs> 